In the light of concern about childhood obesity, some schools have been pioneering short bursts of daily physical activity. One initiative called Wake and Shake is a morning activity and was pioneered at St Edmunds School and Sports College by Geraint Jones. So the thinking behind this was that, uh, you know, let, let, let's put it into the morning. Um, one, to wake the children up you know, when they're in school. Uh, and two, as well, it was probably, it's probably easier for schools to find that initial time of the morning uh, to, to, to implement something like this. But how can exercise help deal with the problem of sleepy afternoons? It's just after lunchtime at Ryden Primary School in Devon, and Year 6 are already deep into an hour-long science lesson about roots. Grace, this is a fibrous root. Can you see it all spreads out? Many children start to flag in the afternoons and find it difficult to keep their concentration. So teacher Keth MacDonald has developed an unusual way of keeping his class awake. Well, you've been working hard, so we're going to have a challenge now. Stay sitting in your chair, but you do need to turn your chairs for this, and you need to look this way. You've got to listen very, very carefully, and watch very carefully so you know what to do. Now, the first thing you do is we're going to do a seated run. And when you run on your chair, your bottom stays exactly where it is, and your feet are not allowed to touch the floor. This is one of several activities called Take 10. They're designed to be dropped into lessons any time the teacher wishes. Your legs and your arms are like this, so you've got to run like that. OK, let's go. The whole point is, first of all, to get children doing that activity daily. It could be pulse raising activities or coordination activities. And we do this because of the health benefits it gives and also it improves the learning. It improves learning because the children are actually doing coordinated challenges. So it's like that now. You can on this one. Ready and go. Lots of them are designed to move the left and right limbs in opposite directions or across the midline of the body. And when this happens, it makes the left and right side of the brains um, link and, and spark vigorously with each other. And what we're trying to do is through these activities and uh, through gaining better links between the left and right side of the brains is um, develop quicker thinking and, and more accurate thinking in the children. Front crawl is a stroke. Move your left arm, pull it down. Then come over, and your head stays nice and still. And your arms pull right in front of you. OK, go. Go, swimmers. It follows very similar ideas to Brain Gym. Brain Gym does exactly the same. What we've tried to do with the, most of these activities is make them pulse raising as well, to have a, a more of a health benefit. As children, activity levels are a bit lower these days than normal because of computer games and what have you. Keth devised these exercises with PE advisor Steve Kibble. In the year 2000, we set up a working group to look at developing a, a project called Fit to Succeed, which is based in 22 schools in Exeter. And it was a means of getting children more active without requiring more curriculum time. To run properly, you've got to move your left leg and your right arm. Then you right leg and your left arm. I've worked with Kev for five years, a talented teacher with a real passion for physical activity and, and is the curriculum leader at the school, in fact. And faster. What Kev brings to the school is um, a particular expertise because he actually did a physical education Great degree. Arm. And what Kev also has, as well as his physical education knowledge, is a really thorough understanding of brain gym and all of the brain gym techniques. Some of you are sort of flapping your wrists in the middle. So you've got to use your arms straight with your knees coming up as well. So, I think it's, it's making great use of small space. It, it basically says that you do not have to be on your feet running around to be active. You can get your heartbeat um, increasing uh, just by sitting in your chair and doing a few arm movements or, or leg movements. Out. 
bend your elbows, and they come down like that. Then you can pull the water. Sam, you ready? Okay, you can start swimming a bit faster. That's it, breaststrokers. Just imagine this crocodile's chasing you now. Swim a bit faster. And it's coming. It's interesting that not all of the children find this very easy and that a number of them are having real coordination problems. And I guess this is the first time they've done this activity. Given a week, you would see quite a marked difference in the quality of the coordination and the movement. And that's one of the advantages of doing this on a regular basis so that children can actually build up a range of skills. Well, the activities themselves can be done at any time. Um, many of them can be done in the classroom, just like that one was done. So I take it upon myself to think, are the children not concentrating? If not, why? And sometimes it's because maybe they've been sitting in their seats too long, or sitting on the floor too long. So giving them an activity where they can stand up and release that, some of that energy is really good. I do them in the, the afternoons very often because that tends to be when they're under a more prolonged uh, stretch of, of study. So by breaking the sessions up, that really, really helps. And so we just fit it into the school day to suit us. Finish your sketches in your next 30 seconds. We're starting to realise more and more that an hour-long lesson is a very long time for learning to take place. There's actually nothing wrong with splitting that hour up into three-quarter of an hour sessions and having three five-minute um, intervals between, or at least two five-minute intervals um, between them. Um, it may have class management issues associated with it, but if, if the teacher has planned properly and has a good control over the class, it, it'll benefit the learning in the class, especially in those pods of, of 15 minutes. Straight out. And Louis, I'm just waiting for you to turn around. Watch carefully. So it's out like that. If you've got very difficult children and, and children that are behavioural challenging, um, it is important to give them a physical outlet as well as brain gym, which actually has a bigger impact on controlling their behaviour. The class I've got now is, is quite a challenging class. First of all in the number, it is above 30, but also with some of the characters there. I find it is really necessary to help keep them focused. It gives them that channel to exert their enthusiasm and so they can direct their other energies towards work. So it gives them that, that avenue to sort of have a break, which I think they need. Um, so as far as classes, it, it does work with any class, I'm sure. Any class I've tried them with, it has worked and it's been g given good results. And relax. Everybody just stand up now. Shake your legs. Shake your hands. Shake your shoulders. Put your hands on your chest and have, take a nice big deep breath in. That's it. Shake your shoulders. And sit down quietly, please. Good one. All looking this way. After 10 minutes of seated sports, Keth's class dives straight back into the science lesson. What does the tap and the bulb contain? Um, the bulb contains... What does the bulb contain? Sugar and? I think it's important that they can have a break so they can get thinking better. These activities, they really help give oxygen to the brain as well. And that's important for them to be able to think. And it also improves their confidence and enthusiasm for school. So it's now... After another 20 minutes study, Keth feels the children are ready for a second challenge, although this time not as physical. We're going to start off with just one ball and we're going to do some group juggling. The ball is going to start with the oldest person in your group. Don't start, don't organise just yet. Just have a think. It's going to start with the oldest person in your group. When I say go, your team will keep throwing the ball in their group. Once it touches the table or the floor, your team are out. And we're going to see which team are champions. Try and throw it, Louis, even if you're close. He's asked the children to organise themselves in age order. So they've got the 
um, the oldest to the youngest. They've not moved themselves around the table, but they have to pass the ball in age order. Red team are out. Group juggling um, was a coordination challenge. Um, it was requiring children to sort of um, be able to throw and catch a ball effectively. Um, it also required good teamwork. Now, what I find with that type of activity is it really gets the children working together, it gets the children smiling, and it gets the children um, focusing in ways that they don't always do in school. One and stop. Well done. These two teams have shown they're definitely ready for the two ball challenge. I've seen red and blue groups do this before, so I want, want an improvement from you. OK, so can you all have two balls now? At this stage, he's introduced two balls, and they're probably three catches apart. And that's really so that the children are having to focus on one ball and quickly track the next one, and that's very good for the eyes and, and for their concentration. He set a little competition up, and the competition is not important, but it's just a way of motivating the children and, and keeping them on task. Um, the interesting thing for me is that you know the children just love it. Reds are out. Sit down, reds. Sit down to blues and yellow. And relax. These activities at Ryden are similar to exercises used in other schools, such as wake and shake in Winterslow and skipping at Ede Primary. The schools share the philosophy that children who take regular exercise do better academically. The main similarity between every single case study is the fact that there is a link between activity uh, and coordination with us as human beings being able to concentrate better after doing that. Something is going on in your body which wakes you up, which makes you concentrate better, which helps you to attain uh, better, helps you to behave better. Um, and that's something to do with your body's reaction to movement. Um, that's the main link between all three. It's just being delivered in slightly different ways. As far as my own classes go, um, I find that the immediate, the short-term effects are that they're happier in school, their self-esteem rises, and they can focus better in class, and it makes my task to sort of manage them and to teach them much better. It makes me feel excited because we do a lot of teamwork together. Mr McDonald said to us, um, it helps your brain work. It's really exciting and then when you before and when you do it then you just feel like calmer and then you can work well. I find it really fun because you have a break from lessons and you like when you go back to lessons you feel more happy and, and you feel like you've enjoyed yourself. Mm -hmm.